Welcome to the Rich Relationship Podcast with Gil and Renee, where amazing things happen. Our goal is to help build, repair, and restore healthy relationships. Our primary focus is on the marriage relationship. However, the topics are applicable to the relationships that we value most. Remember, we're stronger together. Let's grow. Welcome to episode 14 of the Rich Relationship Podcast with Gil and Renee. Today's episode is filled with things that will make you think and make you really reevaluate your idea of divorce. This couple would be considered a phoenix. Why do you say that? Because a phoenix is a bird that rose out of the ashes. And because of their story and because of the things they've experienced, I think that they're the epitome of something rising out of ashes and becoming something beautiful. And we are actually going to be talking to Ken and Deshaun Brown. Ken is the as an entrepreneur and author, and he's the international business coach. And uh, they call him the game changer. The game changer, and he's an, also an inspirational speaker. Yeah. And Deshaun. Deshaun is the developer and the founder of You Are the Gift and One Pearl. She has a heart for young women, helping them to not only understand etiquette, but to understand their identity and their purpose. And she also is presently working with United Way. And so these two together are really making a difference in the business world and in, in family and also in marriage. And they have a lot to talk about. And we're going to give them the opportunity to tell their story yes. on this episode of the Rich Relationship Podcast with Gil and Renee. Come and on. we won't have a got wisdom or a got question because this show is packed with all of those things with these two guests. And we're going to hear it coming up now. Ken and Deshaun, we would like to thank you for coming on the podcast. Well, thank you all so very much for having us. We're so excited to be on your podcast this evening to share our unique story. Um, It is certainly one that um, is interesting, (laughs) and we hope that your audience will find it just as interesting Mm -hmm. um, with the dynamics, as you mentioned, us being newly wed. Um, we're older. We both were married before. So we're really excited to just share our story. And hopefully it'll be a blessing to your audience. Yes. yes. We know you guys will be. What do you have to say, Mr. Brown? <laughs> well, we're excited. We just get started. I'm very, very excited. Um, they all, you know, it's interesting because I've always, uh, I believe that when you teach, you learn. Hmm. So I'm excited about doing this because I still want to learn more about this interesting dynamic. That's right. So by sharing but uh, uh, just being really transparent and being uh, really just transparent and vulnerable, I'm sure that we'll be blessed as well. Yes. So before we get into the vulnerabilities and the transparency, <laughs> the everybody hot. has a yeah. Everybody has a story. Why don't you guys tell us a little bit about your story? You know, how much, however much you want to share about how you guys met, how you got in, in, involved with each other, or any of that. What would you say? As, well, <laughs> um, it's interesting. Um, we uh, met at a speaking engagement. Okay. Um, I got a call from a young lady, and it's so interesting that I don't know her number. I don't know her name. You know, the Bible says, "Be careful." He says, uh, "Be careful. You might be entertaining angels unaware." Exactly. And so I really believe that. And so I got a call, and I was really nonchalant about it. I was really busy, and she said, "Can you know I'm in a I'm in a dire straits?" She said, um, "I have an event coming up, huge event at a school with some youth." on a weekend and I need a speaker. I teach leadership, entrepreneurship, and mm-hmm. business. Yes. And she threw me for a curveball when she said she needed a speaker. She had a speaker that was set, that was um, on deck, mm-hmm. but they canceled at the last minute. Mm-hmm. And it was about um, etiquette. And I'm like, I'm not the person <laughs> for it. Yeah, that's not your thing. And I'm my lane. Exactly. And so she said, um, I said, but I do have a program called How You Dress is How You Will Be Addressed. Mm-hmm. She said, perfect. Wonderful. So I went that day and it was packed out and they broke it up into sections. They're like, uh, uh, we call those groups where you break out groups. Right. Breakout break sessions. Yeah. Yeah. So my breakout group um, was only one person in the group. It was a student and his mom and his sister. But I gave it to him. Yeah. Like yes. it was a packed house. Right. But I got done early and it was a guy next door and he was in the gang and he was a drug deal, ex drug dealer, got mm-hmm. shot. So his meeting was all packed out. Oh. So I went over there to kind of eavesdrop on his and, <laughs> and uh, you know, see what was going on. And I was standing outside 
then up walks this young lady, and I didn't know her. She said, hey, Kim Brown. I said, how you doing? I didn't know who she was. <laughs> and she said, I haven't seen you in a while. And I was like, okay, I've been, I said, I went through the divorce. I never, because at that point in time, it was very, it was serious to me. I reckon that they always, I always believe that life is a day of looking forward and learning looking backwards. I didn't understand that I was still in pain from my divorce because I remember that I didn't even know her. Right. And I remember telling her about, I just went through a divorce. So was she that didn't even ask the question. That was right. your response? Yeah, 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 I said, I just, I mean, I, everybody who, everybody I saw, oh, for I, was share. Just, I was just bleeding on them. All, you said, all she said was hello. No, no, she, she said hello, she knew me. She knew me. Okay. And she's like, Ken, I haven't seen you in a while. I said, well, you know, I went through the divorce. I moved to Florida. Okay, okay. So I find myself, looking back at it, I find myself doing that quite often. Yeah. When someone would talk to me, I was mm-hmm. still hurting. Right. And I would just, you know, always go to that space. Right. And we started talking. And then um, and I just, I think I think I mentioned something to, that, that I had started dating. And I was, I hated dating because I had been married for 18 years. Right. right. And okay. I really enjoyed, I enjoyed being married and didn't want to get a divorce. And so, I, but I was forced to date. I mean, I'm a man. I love women. Mm-hmm. Right. And I date, but I hated dating. And I was going between, I had three ladies that I was trying to find myself. Because I want to go back. I mean, I was, I met my ex-wife. I was high school. Right. We were going to college together. Right. So we kind of grew together. So I had to, after divorce, I had to figure out and find out who I was, first of all, independently. What kind of woman that I wanted to be with. So one, like I was trying to be a player from the Himalayas. Right. right. I was simply trying to figure out. <laughs> Who Ken was compatible with me right. and right. what I wanted, and um, I was very truthful and, and transparent with him about it. And uh, so I mentioned that to her. I said I've been dating, I hate it, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I, then I said I think I'm about to cross over. She said, "What do you mean?" Mm-hmm. I said, "I'm gonna go." I said, "Sisters," and I said, "I'm tired of sisters. I'm gonna go across the board." Uh oh, <laughs> Deshaun, you looking at him like? <laughs> and then and that's what happened. Is she said, "No, no, 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 please." She just no, don't give up on the sisters yet. And she laughed. Uh-huh. And when she laughed, there was something about to laugh. She bent over. Yeah. And the joke wasn't even funny. <laughs> it was funny to me. Right. It was infectious, though. It no, was so funny. I knew. I said, I, I said so, it was something there, but I wasn't looking for it. Right. And we were talking. And we had we kind of made small talk. Mm-hmm. She told me briefly that she had been married for 10 years. Wow. And, and uh, that she had went through a divorce. Then that opened up me to kind of still okay, get my, get my attention with that. Then a gentleman walked up, Quan Fish. Quan Fish. Never forget, he walked up. And then he, hey, Ken Brown, and he started engaging me. And unfortunately, the shine kind of fell back in the in the, in the in the shadows. Kind of faded away. He kind of faded away. And then I remember me talk, hearing her talking, and I see her leave out that the corner of my eye. Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, you pick it up from there. So... <laughs> <laughs> So after that, I was so mad at Quan Fish. He said, no, you didn't just, just interrupt my mm-hmm. conversation. I mean, Your the flow. conversation was flowing. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, when it, it, I'm going to back up just a little bit um, to the event. Mm-hmm. And so we're there and Ken is in his session. I'm in my session and I have the moms and the daughters and I have a full house there. Mm-hmm. And we were supposed to leave at a set time. We oh. were supposed to leave at, say, for example, three o'clock we should have been done Mm -hmm. both of our sessions went over until about 3 15 and so when we both happened to come out in the hall we literally ran Mm -hmm. into each other this almost sounded like a movie right i mean we literally ran into each other Mm -hmm. now what's the coincidence he should have been out at three or i should have been out at three but we both come out only had one person (laughs) (laughs) that shows your faithfulness yes and so when we bump into each other in the hall. I'm like, oh, hey, Kim Brown, how you doing? He's looking at me like, uh, who are you and where do I know you from? Wow. And I was like, well, we met at, you know, Andrew Morrison's event because Kim was there speaking with him because of the business, you know, that he was in. That's where I saw him at. I didn't know him, but I knew of him from that event. Right. And so when we were talking, I mean, he was just so comfortable and I was comfortable with him. I didn't know that it would lead to where it is today, but I just knew that I felt he had great energy. Right. And that's what made me want to continue the conversation with him. And then Quan Fish walks up mm-hmm. and interrupts the conversation. Like, What's up, Ken? You know, they're all dapping each other up mm-hmm. and everything. And so I'm like, okay, let me just fade to black. Oh, no. <laughs> and so I left and I was talking to one of my girlfriends about it. And she said, um, oh, so what happened? I told her, you know, about the mm-hmm. speaking event and everything. And I said, you know, I happened to bump into Ken Brown. She was like, really? How's he been doing? We haven't seen him in a while. So he moved to Florida telling all his business. Right, you know? right. He moved to Florida. He's divorced. Blah, 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 blah. And I said, I really enjoyed talking to him. 
I said, but I don't have his phone number. We didn't exchange information. Quan Fish came up and just busted up the conversation. She said, well, why don't you inbox him on Facebook? I was like, I'm not doing that. She said, shoot your shot. And I was like, I'm not doing that. She was like, go ahead and do it. You know, I'm like, no. Nah. So I waited a couple of days or so. And then I said, I called her back. I said, she said, have you talked to him? I said, no. I said, I didn't inbox him. I was too nervous to do. She was like, they're fine. Inbox him. It's not as bad as you think. I just felt like it was kind of like an online dating. I'm all yeah. in your box. Like, right. hey, you remember me? <laughs> right, right. You know? And so I went on ahead and inboxed him and I said, you know, I met you the other day at the event. We were mm-hmm. both speaking. I really enjoyed our conversation, but it got cut short. Mm-hmm. You know, is it possible that we can get together and maybe have coffee or dessert? He chimed right back in. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so so he you you made the first contact. Right. But he was all but you were getting ready to do it, right? No, you know, I was no, I mean I was <laughs> me transparent. I was I didn't I, it's funny because I'm not really on social media right. okay. even back then I had someone who I had a presence on all the platforms but I was paying someone to manage the day to day back in the day right be honest with you so but that name was so unique when she inboxed me that Deshaun there was something about it I'm like and that was intriguing and mm-hmm. then she said let's meet for coffee and uh, it was carrot cake at J. Alexander's okay mm-hmm. and on my calendar I put an hour I said okay it was business to me it was, right. I had three ladies that I was trying to find myself mm-hmm. so it wasn't like I was like okay let's get together I said she said let's meet and I did an hour on my calendar we met at J. Alexander's and that hour it just flowed the energy mm-hmm. flow conversation was fluid we talked about everything life mm-hmm. relationships rel- I mean everything mm-hmm. and look up we probably split we never got it's funny we never ordered the coffee <laughs> cake. or the carrot cake <laughs> so you just wound up spending six hours now we ate wow. she, she wow. ate wow. six mm-hmm. hours and I never forget, I told her, I said, um, you know, enjoy the conversation. I said, if you want to keep continue talking or contact me again, don't I don't do social media. Here's my number. Let's get. And then I think we talked that night and mm-hmm. been wow. talking ever since Ever-sense. then. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, too, like looking <laughs> back at it, you know, I was just so devastated and confused more than anything mm-hmm. that I was thinking about this earlier today, too, how when we first started to talk. You know, she would text me all in the morning. We would talk in the morning. She would put the phone in her pocket, going to work. She would buy, she would call me if I didn't call. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. And it was funny. Back then, my guards were so up, I didn't want it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't you know, I didn't want it because I didn't trust it. Mm-hmm. But inside, I yearned for it. Yes. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Like I had my hand out, but then right. like yes. making it. Yes, and it was I mean, unconsciously. You, you saying yes? Is yes. that is that something you can relate to? <laughs> no, that's something that I almost <laughs> shut down. Yes. Why? When because you say what did, were you going to shut down? Because it was confusing. It was like in one moment you're saying come this way, and then in the next minute you're like skirt. Right. You know, I don't mm-hmm. want it. I'm like, okay, you're confused. I'm too old for this. Right. When you get it together. Call me back if I'm available. We can talk. So right. since you mentioned that about age, just to give our listeners a, a point of reference, tell if you guys don't mind, tell them how old you guys are and how long you've been married. So I'm 47. I'm 52. Okay. And how long you guys have been married? It'll be three years, September 30th. And see, and that's why in the intro that we talked about, it's a unique situation for somebody to be not, you know, most people getting married in their early 20s mm-hmm. or early 30s or something like that. And you guys were back past that. But you also were married before, so mm-hmm. we'll talk a little bit about that later. But I didn't want to cut you off mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. from your last thought. I just wanted to give our listeners a point of reverence, mm-hmm. just so they can kind of visualize in their mind, as you say, older people and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Right. Not that we are our senior <laughs> citizens or something like right. that. But go ahead. Right. I'm sorry. But we were just too old to be playing games, and right. I needed clarity. Say that again. I said we were too old to be playing games, and yes. I needed clarity. Like, yes. do you want me to come, <clears throat> or do you want me to stop? Right. Mm-hmm. And we always talk about this. I, that was never my intentions. You know, um, I was I was confused. Yes. And I was in a relationship that I didn't want. I wanted to be married. Right. right. I didn't think about it. I was 17 years old when I got committed. And I believe commitment is a line you draw between wishing and doing. Right. Committed, faithful. She'll tell you I never, never uh, had infidelity, didn't mm-hmm. think about it. We're told that's why we were able to be together for so long because we both focus on each other. And we'll be able to be able to do whatever we need to do to build a happy life, a happy business. And so you find yourself outside of that. 
and you don't know. And then I had three sons. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you know, like remember back in the day when they had Kodak photo mats? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, this is what I always think pictures about. Get your pictures developed. Yeah, so remember, so you take a picture and then you could not open it up. It had to be developed in the dark. Right. Mm-hmm. So I always think about, Lord, why did I have to go through this? So I had to go through this process and I had to get developed. But most people get to get developed in the dark. Mm-hmm. Here I am. I'm Ken Brown. Uh-oh. Everybody know me from doing business and right. the community speaking, and then they know me from being married. And so I still have to go through this in the light. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then so that was hard, and mm-hmm. I didn't know how to deal with it. And so my first extent was to kind of protect yourself. Protect myself. Right. Because yeah, right. you couldn't, tr- I mean, think about it. You remember for 18 years, and then that's the trust bank is gone. Right. Mm-hmm. So then, you know, and I think sometimes, I think a lot of it was that it was just a, a lady. Right, you know, I saw every lady as being that lady. Mm. Right, that makes sense. No, yeah, yeah So it wasn't like I was trying to play games. It was like, and you don't get a playbook. Nobody. It was so interesting how my friends couldn't help me with it. My parents couldn't help me with it. I went to several pastors, mm-hmm. and they treated me like I had to play. Right. right. So nobody. Could, so I had to really just go to the throne mm-hmm. and kind of grow through it. And and it, but it, but I wouldn't take. It, I wouldn't. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Yeah. You know, I'm glad and I'm glad we didn't. She didn't lose either. She could She wasn't gonna throw me away. She wasn't gonna throw you away. No. Oh, you don't know the truth. No, right. Yeah, I do. Yes. But I so, know God. so you mentioned that about divorce, which is a good <laughs> point. How that came into your today, you know, something that happened after you got divorced into your present situation while right. you were just meeting Deshaun. How did that? Did some of this type of same type of feelings, emotions, thoughts permeate with you as well when it came to? thinking about your past divorce and how did it play into you as trying to establish a relationship with Ken? No, I wouldn't say it was to his extent. Mm -hmm. I would say that I had more time to process it and get over it as opposed to his being more fresh than mine was. So I had kind of already did with him. I'd done. Al- right, I'd already kind of went through the process and just we needed to make it legal. Mm-hmm. So that was the the difference. He did his legally and had to go through the process all at the same Guess time, the whereas I had separated and mm-hmm. I was done with that and then I needed to go through the legal steps. Yeah, so I had like more being, time. Mine was like being amputated. So yeah. Like, yeah. I'm a good example. Yeah. Yes. It's mm-hmm. different. Like, you know what I mean? Like hers was a, a process, mm-hmm. you know, and a, a conscious choice. Right. Mine was like being the one day you wake up and your arm get amputated. Mm. How do you? How do you? And it without was, anesthesia. Without anesthesia. Mm-hmm. That's a good example. How do you recover from that? Yeah. Right. But you know what? I want to eject though. I think unconsciously she did bring that to the party because when I first met Deshaun, we used to always. I believe before you get intimate, you do an interview. Mm-hmm. So we talked mm-hmm. countless hours. We went out. We you know not intimate, just talked and right. know each other from the inside out. And really talked about what we wanted. And for the first maybe few months, I didn't know what she wanted. Mm -hmm. But I unequivocally knew what she didn't want. Mm -hmm. She kind of had a list of stuff with, I don't want this, I don't want this. And that wasn't anything to do with me. It was old old marriage Mm -hmm. experiences. And I think that's, I think about that a lot. That if you, on the second marriage, that kind of can hamper that because you bring in that I don't want to call it baggage. That's a, that's it a really is baggage. Story. It's baggage, but it's actually it's your it's your life. It's real. It's your story. Right, right. It's real. It's a part you of who you are. You know what I mean? It's part of who you are. So I think it's a part of your soul, your experience. I think we do frame it as being baggage, but I think it's part of. And I, I had to really grow to that. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't think it's. In my opinion, it's not baggage anymore. And that's what love is about. Exactly. Love is about okay. I'm going to accept that person for who they are. Everything they bring to the party mm-hmm. and love is, is that is that you no know, I love that person enough to work if they don't if they don't change I'm still gonna love them in spite of mm-hmm. and that, that was a process I had to go through and grow through and I think for me I didn't look at it as baggage I looked at it as me maturing mm-hmm. because when I married I was younger and I didn't know what I wanted but I knew that after that experience, I knew that I didn't want that again. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to be clear up front that infidelity, drugs, all of these things are what I don't want to ever experience again. So it wasn't as though I was saying that it was him. Or I just wanted to be clear because right. I hadn't voiced 
what I didn't want before or what I wanted before. Mm-hmm. But Ken helped me to say, babe, I know what you don't want. Please right. stop telling me right. what you don't want. I'm clear. Tell me what is it that you do want. And so he helped me to grow in that area as well. But yeah, that was that was challenging. challenging yeah. Yeah, very. And, and the thing that I appreciate about what you guys are talking about is the reality of that. Just because we fall or we fail or we get a divorce, it doesn't mean that's the end of our story. Right. You know, God can take what we've gone through and teach you Mm -hmm. how to communicate what you do want. Or he can teach you how to love again, how to trust Mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. And I I love you guys being so transparent because so many times we think that the things that we happen becomes who we are. Mm -hmm. And what we've gone through is just what we've gone through. It's not who we are. No, no. And and let's run with that because if you said when you guys were going through the situation of kind of re or connecting almost like starting the initial stages of your relationship you spent a lot of time talking Talking and talking Mm -hmm. talking do you think that had an impact on being able to get to know each other and also help heal each other i think the healing part is the process i think it is but but i think it did for me it was being able to trust Mm -hmm. Trust is huge to me, mm-hmm. right. especially when you somebody that you 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 raw with, yeah. and they, they, they betray that trust. So you know, so for me, they're being able to talk and not being judged on, on, on what you're talking about, and by listening and being engaged, building that trust bank. That was huge. We did that a lot. I mean, we used to just just get together and talk and talk and talk. And well, what do you think about this? We talked about everything, everything, religion, uh, every you no know, sex, everything, mm-hmm. children. Um, our life and I think that really helped and we didn't muddy the waters by being intimate mm-hmm. that thing that helped as well and I was going to ask you that when you said yeah. you guys were intimate you didn't mean you guys had intercourse because you guys were talking about being intimate with your communication open raw right, right. Raw, real. I believe mm-hmm. I think the most powerful thing I think as a man I think being naked with your clothes on is very powerful yes mm-hmm. it is and it takes a lot that. of self control yeah we mm-hmm. did that I mean I wanted to be vulnerable with your clothes on. And then we were very cautious about that because we didn't want to money the waters. And, um, but yeah, that was really helpful. You know, one thing too, I wanted to, you know, make sure I met just from my old experience, you know, I, I did get a chance to grow up with my ex-wife family to see who she's going to become, who, what, you know, you know, a tree buys fruit, what ground was she planted in? And so I took, I learned that. I said that I want to meet your mother, your father, your brothers, your cousins to really see who you who put into you poured into you? Yeah. That was another thing I think that helped me um, and make our relationship stronger. You know, to see okay, maybe some of the things, some of the quirks or idiosyncrasies that, that I see, you know, it's not her. It's brought to the table through a family, mm-hmm. and that's huge. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because that could be a game changer too. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think just the time we took, we took it slow, and mm-hmm. I, had, I actually, you know, I had this grandiose idea that I didn't want to blend families, and I was so delusional looking back at it. You know, I was so delusional. I and mean, I wanted to, I said, I want to blend families. And I had this plan. Wanted to steal God, still trying to control, I still trying to control God. You know, and I said, no, five years. My youngest son, if you know, did or not. <laughs> mm-hmm, I mean, sure it was is. just, I went through all the, this litany of, not excuses, but just, it was trauma. Mm-hmm. Right. I, my, my, it was I, probably I, fear. It, it was trauma. It fear. was. Fear. It mm-hmm. probably was. What's another word higher than fear? Trauma. Okay. Oh, that's another one. <laughs> that one. Terror. Yeah, terror. Yeah, terror. It was terror. Yes. So yeah. So you mentioned about the blended family. Let's talk about that for a minute because you guys have a blended family. Can you kind of give an overview of what your family dynamic was and how did that impact your relationship once you guys got married? So in the course of my divorce, I got custody, uh, full custody of my son. So mm-hmm. he was with me and he was... Eight, eight, eight okay. when eight. we met. Okay. Yeah. And Ken's boys, one. I had three. I had a, one was in a, a junior high school. No, he was, a, yeah, about a junior, junior high school. One was a freshman and one was a baby. I mean, he was like about 10. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, I, and I had custody of my sons too. All right. Mm-hmm. So now you got a house full of boys. Yes. Right? <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. And now how did you go from being just the single parents, so yeah. to speak, to now you got blended family. What was that dynamic like? Was it? That was interesting. Once again, I'm mean, be totally transparent. I had this grandiose idea because it was very, this is another, this is another unique situation that uh, her ex, you know, was still involved mm-hmm. in the life. They had, a, we, it's a funny, the term I used was 
They had the perfect triangle. She would keep him Monday through Friday. Friday, he would go pick him up from school, keep him to Sunday. They worked that work for them. Mm-hmm. And then when I came into the picture, it worked for us because we only met when he was gone. Okay. Cause I felt like as a being, raising, raising boys, I didn't want to confuse him. And I'm being totally transparent. Yeah. I knew that I, I was a great father. Mm-hmm. And I told her, I said, be careful. I said, he has a father. Mm-hmm. But when he get with me, it's going to be a problem because, you know, it, I'm a great father. Mm-hmm. And I was nervous about that because I didn't want to step on his father's toes. So a guard I put up was that I said, he needs to be Casper to me. I need to be Casper to him. Mm-hmm. A ghost. And I think she got offended by that. She, mm-hmm. first, My wife first thought that I didn't want to accept her son. Mm-hmm. But it was totally because I didn't want to go through the pain, the hurt. I thought it was too new and confusing. He was a baby. And what yeah. did you think about that? About I was the playing ghost, games. About mm-hmm. the ghost. Really? I didn't agree at, agree at all. all. Not at all. I'm like, we're a package <laughs> deal. This is my son. Right. You know, where I go, he goes. So right. you either accept him and me or neither one of us. Right. And so I kind of... Was this during the dating stage? Yeah, or was this day during, one. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. And so, so it was great that, you know, I had Mark Allen during the week and then his dad had him on the weekend. Mm-hmm. So we could get together mm-hmm. and, you know, could um, get mm-hmm. to know each That's other. That was beautiful. But it was hard when he said that. I was thinking, this doesn't sound right. You know, he's got three boys. He maybe is not interested in another one, mm-hmm. you know. But as time went on, I just said, okay, Lord. Just help me with this because I'm not understanding. I'm not feeling it at all. I want to just back up, you know. And the more he talked about it and the more, I would have to say after he got to meet Mark Allen to spend time with him, I think things shifted a little bit. I think he was still a little nervous about the whole blending because he didn't grow up like that. His parents Mm -hmm. had them. They started having babies at 13 and 14 Mm -hmm. and all of his siblings have the same dad, the Mm -hmm. same mom. And it was just different for him whereas me that wasn't how I was raised I have you know siblings that have a different father and that didn't bother me at all but Ken was like no I don't want that you know we all had the same parents I just that's different I didn't grow up I'm like babe I understand it's different but if you want me you have to take Mark Allen too so it was a challenge for a a minute that was huge yeah it's funny because we you see see the depth of the conversations we had Mm -hmm. because we really had to pull an onion back and say what why do I have this why is this ingrained in me? Mm-hmm. Right. Something I made up. Right. Because you can't be what you can't see. Like mm-hmm. Sean said, my father was 14 when my mother got pregnant. My mother was 13. And so they went on to have five kids. Mm-hmm. And they, well, I got the same father, all five. They, when they got divorced, my mother never brought another man in our household before. Never. And so I thought that it was, I felt irresponsible. Right. I'm like, if my parents can do that at 13 or 14, I can wait until my mom, my mom, never brought a man never at 52 years old never did another man come in my house I didn't even see her dating mm-hmm. now I know she probably did it with old granny's house right. and so I wanted to do the same thing right but then looking back at it I was being unfair right because mm-hmm. that was a old, that was a different relationship right different time different mm-hmm. time and it took some coaching and some searching the heart and just asking God to circumcise my heart and my mind right and and um it, I, I got over that. I got yeah. over myself. But I, and I think for some, I used to get upset because people so quick to tell you how you should feel. No. Mm-hmm. But that was my reality. Right. right. And I really had to share that. I'm not just making this up saying I don't want to. I don't have a blueprint for that. And I think it was great that she, because she was real cool. I was like, wait a minute. You just going to let me see your kid? Mm-hmm. You ain't, I thought mothers protect kids. My mother protected. And it was unfair for me in one instance to to look at that optic like that, but in, in, on, on the same sense, what about my experience? I right. can't just erase it for society. You know, yeah, it, times might have changed, but that was my reality. And whether I didn't want to, I didn't know how. Mm-hmm. I couldn't imagine. Like right now, it's amazing the fact that I can call Mark out of my son. He can call me dead. Because fast forward three years ago, I'm like, not going to have it. You got yeah. it dead. Yeah. So that where, was my mindset. Where was, really? the, where was the change? The what change. Was the I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. Praying. Mm-hmm. Praying out to the Lord. Lord, you know my heart. Circumcise my heart. You know, Lord, you know I love I love developing young men and love children. And um, But I was just confused. And we know God not the author of confusion. Mm-hmm. Right. And I really believe that the enemy, not being funny, but the enemy 
I passed the Joseph test, so mm-hmm. to speak, because he wanted to harden my heart. What happened to me, I, I was betrayed yes. by my, mm-hmm. my wife. And so technically my heart should have been hardened. Mm-hmm. And I and that's so powerful that I didn't allow it to. I went to the throne and, and then, and he told me, he told me, I'll never forget when I had my friends, you know, one day I went before him, I said, Lord, I don't like this. And he told me, he said, son, I have a gift for you. Mm-hmm. And he said, but you cannot receive the gift until you get rid of what's in your hand. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and he and I'm not, he didn't tell me a name, but he told me, he said, she's going to be funny. You're going to be compatible. He named stuff. And as he named it, I just can feel it. Mm-hmm. And fast forward, this is it. Mm-hmm. This is the gift. So mm-hmm. he kind of named values and character characters traits. and everything. He just said, this is jointly fitted together. I've mm-hmm. tailor made. And looking back at it, I can be totally transparent. Sometimes we talk about divorce. And I think about this often. I say, Lord, okay, Lord, I was happy. I would have rolled it out. But he it says he gives you, he, he gives you abundantly more than you hope ask to think for. And so I really want to challenge thinking about divorce. God hates divorce, but he loves us. Yes. And sometimes, you know, think about it. There's casualties all throughout the Bible. Look, right. about, look at Job. Mm-hmm. Look at Job. Job had a wife and his wife wasn't with him. He had a second wife. I looked at that and said, you know, maybe it was, it, I know it was divine by God because I didn't, to be honest with you, I didn't go before God and ask about my first wife. Mm-hmm. I just happened and thought, did what I thought before. You meet somebody, you fall in love, you get married. Right. But this one, I know I go, I, I know because I know yeah. that he told me and showed me that this. And so that really made me want to fight for it and, and most importantly, die myself. I want to say that I think too that really helped me and we talked about this as well I think that um, a marriage certificate is a death certificate and with me I think that's I can't be for the shine but for me that's what made me help and and, and, and uh, really embrace the whole situation mm-hmm. because when you stand before God and family and friends you know you're standing there as two individuals mm-hmm. but the union is that Ken Brown had to die. Mm-hmm. Deshaun Sharpley had to die. Mm-hmm. So we both can become one new creation yes. in Christ Jesus. I think that's why the divorce rate is so high and it's and it's so hard because we come to this thing called holy matrimony and we want to still bring ourselves. Yes. Mm-hmm. And we struggle with that now. When we ever have any kind of conflict, it's not because we don't love each other or because of anything else. When I pull the onion back, it's because I'm being selfish and she's being selfish yes. and we don't want to die to each other every time we have a conversation I look back and reflect and it's not about nothing else but one of us are being selfish and one mm-hmm. thing we committed to when we were dating was that in order to be successful in marriage that we had to go be the diabolically opposed to the world the world tells us that you got to win in business you got to win in finances mm-hmm. but in marriage if you have a win lose that a house divided against itself can't stand. Mm-hmm. Right. So we came with this concept called losing in love. Mm-hmm. That when we in, in our relationship, that when we have, we get that proverbial fork in the road. That one of us have to say, you know what? In order for us to win, right. one of us has to take it for the team. Take it for the team. That's right. And it's an avid flow. Mm-hmm. And, and and you ain't got to keep score. No. You just mm-hmm. know that. You know what? This is important. I'm gonna shut my mouth. That's right. And that that was a part part as a process. That was the beginning. Of, of embracing this whole new mm-hmm. existence with dying to my thoughts, my experiences, my past. And let me tell you something, that was probably one of the hardest things I've had to do. Because mm-hmm. I thought, I thought <laughs> that it was, it worked. Yeah. It worked, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. but he, he had something bigger and better, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the Speaking hardest things. With, um, I mean, that was, yeah, it was, it was, let me, y'all understand, it was That challenging. was so hard for him, yeah. and it was challenging for me because I wasn't used to that. I was mm-hmm. used to, if a man was interested, he just was, hey. He pursued. He pursued me and yes. wooed me and dined and whined and mm-hmm. everything. Whereas with Ken, his thing, he was just so scared. And I, he hates that word. He hates the word fear. But he was so fearful because mm-hmm. of what happened with his ex-wife and how that whole thing transpired. It just gave him a bad taste in his mouth. And he just felt like, I just don't trust women. Right. And I was trying to, and this is why, if I didn't tell you then, that we would have these in-depth conversations just so that you could see my heart and that I wasn't about 
what you had and who you were in the community. It was nothing about that. It was about your presence mm-hmm. that you made me feel a certain way mm-hmm. when we met. And I was just like, Lord, I just feel something different with him. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but you got to help me to just kind of back up a little bit and let him deal with that hurt. Like you Mm -hmm. said, I was hurting and it was all over you. Mm -hmm. You didn't see it at the time you were going through the motions, but we could see it on the outside. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Lord, I know this is not his heart. I know that it's from the experience, but how do I be patient? How do I back up and allow him to heal from that? Because I can't get into a relationship with that. That's not going to be fruitful for me or Mm -hmm. him. But he was just so guarded. And I'm like, I want to ask questions. And his thing was, I don't want you asking me questions just so that you'll know how to respond to me, how to cater to me. And I was telling him it wasn't about that. I wanted to just have conversations. with I didn't want you to feel as though I'm asking you for stuff. He had women that were just give me this, give me that, pay this, pay. I didn't come to him like that. I said, I just want to talk to you. I just want to get to know you. I want time to pass seasons several years where I can talk to you Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to get to know you and allow him time to heal you know his broken heart because he was just wounded he was just like Mm -hmm. he said bleeding all over people Mm -hmm. you just felt it you saw it you it was really it it wasn't that it wasn't good at all Mm -hmm. but I mean I knew that there was something more deeper than that surface with that hurt and so Mm -hmm. thank God he gave me the patience to be able to wait that out to allow him to heal because he's an amazing man and I mm-hmm. told him yesterday I said I thank God for you because you're perfect for me we're not perfect at all but mm-hmm. we're perfect for each other and I know that God knew what I needed he knew what you needed mm-hmm. and it just took us a minute to get through that hump and we're gonna have other humps and bumps oh, yeah. going along yeah. but that major hump that we had then that was huge. it was huge yeah. yeah that was I mean my, my family knew about it I mean I just had this you know, it, it just didn't have the time. Because think about it, you know, I had sold my business and went through the divorce at the same time. I had the same lawyer. Two losses. Same mm-hmm. lawyer. Lo- and nobody never, but see, no one ever told me that. Anybody mm-hmm. told me, you can't round. But get, put your head up. You could you, I mean, who you, who you vulnerable to? Right. I mean, I'm talking about my best friends. They thought it was me, you know, because of who I am. They thought I was the one who wanted the divorce. Then my pastor, my friends who were pastors. I mean, who do you talk, who leads the leader? And so I had to really grow through that experience in the light. Mm-hmm. So that's what she saw. Mm-hmm. I didn't get a chance to steal away. And I, but I did at the end. I went to Florida for two years. I went. I did. I had custody of my sons, and I said, "Look, we gotta get out of here because it was too hard." Mm-hmm. But then they wanted to stay, so I took. I, I told my ex-wife, I said, "Keep them," you know. And I still took care of everything, but I said, "I need to go away," and that really helped me. I went away, I wrote a, another book, mm-hmm. and it was just, I needed to get out of Michigan because it was a source of pain. Mm-hmm. Right. The place that in 2001 I came was a source of dreams mm-hmm. and brought my family here and success, and then the same place on the other, on the other end of the continent became a source of pain, and and, um, and then you go into a new relationship, you're right. I think it, I think, but I think, you know, the Bible says that a brother is born out of adversity. Mm-hmm. And see, yeah, it is easy for somebody to come. You flying 3,000 feet, and then you land and get on the plane. So I think the good thing was that, you know, we always talked about seeing each other in all, in all seasons. seasons. Mm-hmm. So I really believe that the fact that we were weathered to, we, we, were, we were able to go through that together and not chase each other away because Sean brought some things to it. She was hurt too, mm-hmm. you know, but she just was really stoic about it. And then like she, I think you got a good point up. Her she had been separated for ten almost how many years been met? It was like alone. three or four. She was separated. So you kinda of went through a She went through mm-hmm. she was a single mom. Right. She had went on with her life. I didn't get a chance. I would get my arm severed off. Right. Mm-hmm. And then okay, and then you got the boys. And my sons are like they're not babies. Mm-hmm. They and I had to keep on a happy face and still right. provide for them and, and go to PTA meetings. I had never been a the grocery shopping in the years. Right. So I had to juxtaposition and still run the business. But then who was taking care of me? Exactly. Mm-hmm. On the inside. But mm-hmm. then it's hard because okay, you're a man and you say, Well man up. That's mm-hmm. that's an insult. It is. Right. You know, you know, my father passed away so I couldn't call him. So I had no one in my circle that had then that I had no not known anyone who had went through that mm-hmm. that can really coach me and guide me through it. And so I guess we kinda help each other get healed yeah just by being raw and transparent and not quitting and, and vulnerable vulnerable that was the biggest thing just being totally totally transparent and uh 
not quitting. But it was it wasn't like it was it was it was tough because we both had open wounds. But in open wounds that was the toughest part. Because sometimes I think I would do things, I think it might have brought up some kind of things in her mind. And then the way I was looking at my relationship wasn't through the optic of her, it was my old past. So we were bringing certain things into the relationship and it was new. And that's that's counterintuitive, is it not? Mm-hmm. If you're trying to start something new, you gotta start with a clean slate. Mm-hmm. I think we both came with some with some I don't wanna call it baggage, it was we brought some experience to the party. So speaking <laughs> about that, just a good a, a follow up question to that would be based on your experiences and everything that you guys went through and kinda went and it went through together, what would what would be some things that you could tell people going into a relationship, some traits or some character things or things that they can take away to be successful going into the relationship that you learned based on your experiences? I think before you get before you before you get connected, make sure you get healed. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because we, we were very blessed. That's how I know that it was God covered us. Okay. Because technically we we doing that little that the period that we first came together I know I was still hurt hurting mm-hmm. and I think she never got Sean never got no got help mm-hmm. and she went through some things as well and so we both came together and I think we both were hurting right and but love con- conquers everything mm-hmm. I think love is really what what made us sustain so the advice I would give is that you know and let me give you an example on a plane mine on an airplane you know I, I travel and so in, in, in the air before it takes off the students will stand up and they say any event of a cabin pressure change. Put the mask you know, on. Put your, your mask on first. Mm-hmm. It, and it's powerful when you really listen to it. It's, and at first, my old mind told me, oh, that's selfish. We always talk, take care of yourself, you know, take care of other people first. And it says, if you're traveling with a child or a loved one, put yours on first. Mm-hmm. And my advice to everybody would be, put your mask on first. Yes. So get healed. Because mm-hmm. if you can put your mask on, if you healed, if you're whole, if you're solid, if you're grounded, and if you're at peace with what happened, then you can talk, communicate effectively. Think about it. I was like a baby. You know, I'm a baby. I'm mm-hmm. a grown man, but emotionally, I'm like a child because, right. you know, we, I mean, my sons, you would feed them, change their diaper, you know, you would pat them, walk them, rock them, and they still would cry. Mm-hmm. And you like, tell me what's wrong. <laughs> they couldn't. So that was know. me. Mm-hmm. I was hurting, but I couldn't tell her what was going on you know <laughs> so what yeah. would be something you would say so Kim says healing what would you say I would say that as well but I would also say unpack your bags what do you mean by you that? know if you need to go through counseling if mm. you need to talk to someone to help you to unpack what it is that you are bringing to the party it's like we're all bringing so we all have a story mm-hmm. right. we mm-hmm. all are bringing something if you pass two three four five years old you are bringing something with you mm-hmm. knowingly or unknowingly mm-hmm. so if you're coming together as we did if we're we'll be married three years in september i'm 47 mm-hmm. so i was 44 mm-hmm. when we got married just think that's 44 years of the way i was raised mm-hmm. you know with my parents um, relationships, siblings. I mean, a lot of stuff I brought to the party that I wish I had unpacked those things before I came to him, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So I would encourage someone to just unpack your bags. It's okay to talk to someone about what you're dealing with, about your past hurts, about your insecurities, you know, whatever it is, talk to someone about it because you can't solve it on your own. No. Mm-hmm. You know, the thing that when you talk about taking off the mask, then you said put the mask on mm-hmm. and what you just said was unpacked mm-hmm. was that we have to put on the mask to save your life but mm-hmm. take off the mask of your pain mm-hmm. and your and your shame and all the things that happened what would you say was the origin of your pain what was the was it what was what would you say what was the origin of it when you really unpack it, you say peel back the onion what is the root cause of what you were afraid of I don't know if I was afraid. It was like I was mad mm-hmm. because I had, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a visionary. Mm-hmm. And we had a plan. We were winning. Mm-hmm. I yeah. like winning. <laughs> so you're going to throw the hand. You know, it was like, and then honestly, I think it was a selfish. I was a little bit, not bitter. I was mad because how dare you? Mm-hmm. There's five people in this relationship. And you just get to choose that you want to press eject and leave four men, African-American men, that that took me a while. Right. How dare you? Okay, you know, you had a great life. 
Like, and some of us, I want to say this, I might get, get in trouble for it. You know, that happy word. I can't stand that word. Yeah. It ain't real, folks. Mm -mm. Happy is only predicated plus what's happening. Right. Mm. Well, I thought we had joy. Joy is when Jesus is on you. It's inside your happy home. But see, and that's what happened was you're chasing happiness. And you, you it's, it's, not, it's not real. No, it's and not. And that's what happened. Chasing happiness. Well, happy is only etched in time. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing was, well, I'm almost 50 years old and I don't know what I want to do. Well, just do life. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was more of of uh, being upset about, well, wait a minute, it's selfish, and then you're in a relationship with somebody, and I we always talked about, well, if I got your back and you got my back, we're covered. But as soon as you turn your back to look at your back, then I'm vulnerable. Mm -hmm. That took me a long time right. to get over. Um, then I started, it was a period of, you know, I, didn't, I found out later through counseling is that there's stages to grief. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. That mm -hmm. people don't talk about, mm -hmm. but get over it. You should, you should, but you got to go through every the first stage is hurt, right? Pain, anger, all those stages, denial, it's denial, mm -hmm. fear, shock, so fear, and die, denial kind of go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So, who are we to say what stage you in, right? Mm -hmm. Who do you to say how long my runway should be, mm -hmm. right? And then I got all this other stuff in my life that's stopping me from going through each stage, right? And so, that it, it was confusion, right? I didn't know what was going on I wasn't used to it and so um, and then I guess at the end of the day just never had the time to really process it right. and so guess what I can sit here today and say I've had now four or five years to process it and I've learned and, it, and I, might, I might sound crazy for saying this but I wouldn't change anything if you wouldn't be who you are yeah I believe that if you go through something you don't grow through it you know you end up going through it over and over mm -hmm. again and I'm glad that me being the matriarch of my family having four boys because I know because I know that either all or one of my boys are going to go through something similar. And you can share your story with them. I can share my story. I can coach them. I can love on them because I didn't have anyone to do that to me. And see, that's how God works. He can trust me. And I'm not just being facetious. Yeah. I came through this process understanding too. First, it was like, well, why? But then God said, why, why not, not you? Because mm -hmm. I can trust you because you're going to go through this. You're going to feel crushed. You're going to feel dejected. You're going to feel betrayed by your friends. And you're still, you're still going to give me the glory. Right. And you're not doing it for you. You're doing it for your children, children, children. Right. I got mad at God for that, too. Like, why I got to be the one? Why I got to be the Savior? All I want to do is, but I, but, 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 you know. And so, <laughs> you and know, so, someone, yeah, someone so told you, me that God always <laughs> gives his most difficult battles to his strongest soldiers. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I believe that. Mm -hmm. I yes. believe that. And because I mean, I mean, my heart. Look, look. I love, I love my family. Wouldn't change anything. I've grown. I've learned patience. Mm -hmm. um, I've been. Um, I'm more. Uh oh, Deshaun's laughing at that one. And I'm more patient. patient. Yeah. See, that was my big thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm, mm -hmm. I learned patience through this. I mm -hmm. learned. But look, the fruits of the spirit. Patience, love, long suffering. So when you really feel it on your back, mm -hmm. it was all spiritual. It was. Mm -hmm. and it was said, spiritual. And you that said something that was really good about the stages of grief. The last stage is acceptance. Mm -hmm. Come on, brother. Mm -hmm. And once yeah. you accepted it, then you can start moving forward to get past mm -hmm. it because yeah. now you can start seeing it for what it was. Right. You're healed. Yeah. Like just like you said, you went down to Florida. Now you're coming back. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, with Deshaun was seeing some of that hurt and pain mm -hmm. and anguish and all that stuff, you start seeing it drop mm -hmm. off. Yeah. So that's a good transition into how do you see love now between you guys? I see it as um, definitely a more mature love now. I think for five years ago, was it? It was kind of shaky, kind of mm. rocky. Kind of, I don't want to say it was. Was it because it was just new? Yeah, I mean, it could have been because it was new. It could have been because what we were going through to try to get together. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know how you have two magnets that are trying to come together. And then for some reason, it just keeps pushing it right. back. I don't know what that is, but it was like we were trying to come together, but just, just kind of so. backing up. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was a good thing because it did allow us to go through to the grow. grieving process. Yeah. And I'm glad I'm, I'm going to look at that tonight, the steps or the phases of the grieving Great. process, because oh. I think I had gone through mine. I was I was good. Mm -hmm. Whereas with Kim, when I brought up divorce, he just turned into a whole nother man. It was like, who is this guy? Yeah, you know, 
that was really a tough spot yes. for him. So I think it's a more mature love now. I think it's a more pure love. And I think what really helped us is that we just committed to putting God first mm-hmm. and trusting God with our whole hearts. And like, Lord, we know you put us together. You're going to make it work. Right. You're going to do what needs to be done for us to continue to move forward victoriously. And I think that was the change because initially we were working in our own strength. Mm-hmm. It was our personal, you know, how I know how to date, how he knew how to date. And God was like, I'm not in none of that. I don't have anything to do with that. That's when you right. put me in it, then I can help you all to grow right. the way that it needs to be done. And I think once we surrendered and said, you know, our statement about losing in love and God, we're going to put you first and allow you to lead this relationship and everything that we do. That's when things shifted and our love began to really grow and it continues to grow now. The more we lean in to God and not lean on and depend on ourselves. Yeah, I would agree. I think for me, um, it's just I was a short is selfless. You know, God, you know, God showed me that, um, you know. My assignment was to not to try to change mm-hmm. or compare or have, and this was a hard one for me, have expectations of my wife. Mm-hmm. You know, he, and I, I, my, you know, he just, just trust me to don't see her through your lenses. See her as my daughter. Even when I pray, when he's talking to me, mm-hmm. he don't call her to shine. He said, my daughter. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wow, that's powerful. Mm-hmm. And so that to me helped, you know, did this self because love is patient it's kind it's not self-seeking right. so for me i guess it is being mature yeah. love the saying that, okay it's not about you it's about making sure but then that to be honest with you that's why a lot of I, my resistance was because i didn't know that i could i could trust the shine with my heart right and i want to say that because think about it i mean you, you give somebody your heart and because of her her damage of being like you know it abandoned i said okay did she have the and that word that bad word that she hated was capacity mm-hmm. we had talked and I said do you have the capacity to love me and one thing Deshaun she looked at as being a, a a negative thinking that she didn't have something I gotta say no because I know I'm a big spirit I come with a lot and not that I love I don't love hard but I'm a committed kind of guy and see people can I say this it's funny how people some people want you to be committed to them but they can't have no commitment, okay? Because if I ask Sean to be committed with me as a man, my responsibility is to be able to be there and to be engaged mentally, physically, emotionally, you know, financially. You're going to miss some of those strengths sometimes. And then when you do miss it, is the person going to start to look at you sideways? Or the, that's so, as human beings, we want that commitment, but it's a big lift to be engaged with someone and say, you all, you of course God in the middle, but emotionally, you can't. I can't go to my boy, my boys, or my girlfriend. I gotta go to my husband, my wife. Mm-hmm. You know, of course, sexually or physically. Fine. So, do you have the capacity to do that? And I think, in fairness, some of us don't. Right. Not because no fault of our own, because you can't. Haven't been you can't you have, say it again for me. Haven't been taught. Your mom and daddy didn't don't talk. Mm-hmm. Your mom and daddy don't love. They don't. They don't. You didn't see them. So what are you learning from? Mm-hmm. It was like it was an indictment. It was like, okay, am I gonna be? Am I gonna be fulfilled in that in one of them areas? Because that's powerful. If, if I grew up and emotionally, we my family were we talked, we loved, we we were all transparent. And I knew that I needed somebody in my life that if I open up like she wanted me to, I was I was not afraid of that. Can she really handle all this kuchima? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and that is such a great point. And I thank you guys because this has been an awesome time, you know, where we started out just talking about your story. We kind of went into some of the things that you learned through the divorce and things that you learned from blended families and those types of things. And we we thank you guys for allowing us just to share. It's like you just said, the last point you made about opening up your heart. You guys have opened up your heart. We always say it on our show, being honest, open, and transparent. And we thank you guys for actually doing that. So as we close the show, because we can keep going and going and going, but we're going to definitely want to have you guys back again you know, and, and talk more about some of the other things that you guys are experiencing. And we really appreciate the time, baby. Is there something else you want to be? Not that we signed up, but is there yeah, something you want to One of the make? things I want to share is that um, Deshaun and Ken are both very successful young people, young adults, mature adults. 
And the thing that I respect the most about you all is that um, the whole a part of what birthed the Rich Relationship Podcast was you two, because you guys were in two different places, and we wanted to find a way. When you guys said we want to go through together, we grow. Mm-hmm. That was humbling to us that you wow. guys yeah, entrusted yep. your relationship, your premarital, to us, mm-hmm. and so it's a blessing to see oh. the growth the maturity because you know we know the behind the scenes stuff and so to see it to see the love and the maturity and the selflessness it is a breath of fresh air and so it's so important for people no matter how successful you are like you said you got to trust your relationship to someone you have to have a safe place Mm -hmm. that you can go and and be healed and be heard and and to learn how to understand all the things that are going on in your heart. So mm-hmm. I, you guys are, are an example of what it takes to be in a healthy relationship. And it's to include God, mm-hmm. each other, and other people who genuinely love and care about you. Yeah. And so when people don't have any place to go, that's why we have the Rich Relationship Podcast. Mm-hmm. Because people need to hear that's true. our story. They need to hear our pain. They need to hear our hurt. No matter what the they see in social media, they need to see behind the veil, behind mm-hmm. the post. Mm-hmm. And I, I know you guys personally, and it's so awesome to have you guys be so transparent. Mm-hmm. So thank you for your being vulnerable and being hot and honest yeah. and open. And it's going to really help a lot of people. This is going to live on for a long time, mm-hmm. forever. That's powerful. You know what? It's yeah. funny you brought that up because that was that was a challenging time. But we, like, I didn't know you all. I know. And the child really spoke highly of you all because of you all. Like, who you? Who do yeah. right. people? You all. I know I thought you had a setup. You know what I mean? Like, okay. Like, what is, what are they doing? What are they doing? Some people. Are so they going to side with her? But that, that, was, that, was, that was not the case. Mm-hmm. You all had a system. You had a process. It was in part. You all were definitely impartial, objective about it. And we, I know I personally talk about this to a lot of people. That was huge. And that, once again, order, order our steps, Lord. I know mm-hmm. that was God ordained. For me to be humble enough and submit to it, then the John to bring it to the table. But one thing that came out of that, we look when you when you look at that that um, the survey we did, mm-hmm. and we looked at it, and I remember Gil, you were like, "Wow, why are we doing this? Y'all were p- compatible on every, you know, level, but mm-hmm. the one gap we had was communication." Yes. Mm-hmm. And I always talk about this, and you told us you're like, "Okay, Deshaun, look, you know, uh, in order for you in terms of spirit of communication." You're gonna to have to search yourself. That mm-hmm. means you're gonna to have to stand up. Mm-hmm. And Ken, being the leader, being the man, and being the assertive, if you want Deshaun to assert herself, you're gonna to have to sit down so she can stand up. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes, I still draw on that mm-hmm. right now mm-hmm. when we having conversations. You know, if I want my wife to be real, raw, and authentic, I have to sit down mm-hmm. so she can stand up because. With my magnanimous personality, <laughs> I'm just right along. I mean that in a funny way. I mean, but sometimes oh, I will. We love you. We you know love what I'm saying? You kids. I'll, she, she, she'll because I'll talk and then she won't be not 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 real, but because I'll not over talk her, but mm-hmm. my opinion. And then so she's like, okay, well I'm not gonna say anything. And I learn. I'm learning. I'm still learning that <laughs> if I really want to hear her heart and listen to the listen, mm-hmm. listening, that I have to sit down. Mm-hmm. I don't I have to always mm-hmm. express my opinion. I don't like the yes dear thing, but I have to do that sometimes. <laughs> yes. Right. 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 Yes, man. Dear. Right. You're learning. Yes, That's learning. Yes. You're learning. Yes, dear, yes, mm-hmm. dear. But um but it's a process though. Yeah. So yeah. I, you brought that up and that was a good point. That was huge mm-hmm. for us back then, that communication wow. thing. Cause it's still a cause they, once again, we both were brought and it's funny, a couple months ago my family came and it was a growing experience. So my mother, my sister Two of my sisters mm-hmm. came and nephew. Couple, my nephew came and it was it was almost it was the first time that Sean had got a chance to see our family, how we engage. Mm-hmm. We wake up in the morning, we come to the round table and we'll talk, communicate about a whole gap, but do we not? Loudly. And sometimes loudly, lo- not. lovingly <laughs> though. And I think and, and she was raised quite the wow. opposite. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. hey, you don't talk about it. Yeah. what happens in the house stays in the house. This is right. between you and me. Doing you and me. Right. So now this is another thing with marriage too. How do you have two people? How do you become one? Mm-hmm. One, not, one not right, one not wrong. But what I've learned is 
that was my family. That's her family. Right. We have to create your own. How we're going to communicate. Right. Mm-hmm. And that was a hard one. We mm-hmm. still working on it right now. Yes. Because we bring it to the part right now. You know, and have I got, I got better with this? We had one thing in my family. We would not go to bed without talking. We would not. I don't care how we would talk all was an hour. We did it too. And and so I brought that to the party. Mm-hmm. If we had an issue. What you going to bed? What we gotta talk? <laughs> and he's like, you talk about it for hours and hours. Yes, we haven't yes. got a solution to it. Yeah, what solution? And it's gonna carry over. And I'm getting better and better. Like you know Good. what? It ain't important. Right. Don't talk. It's important, but it ain't important. Right. 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 That makes sense. Right. It's not that important. It's very important to me, but for the good of the whole, mm-hmm. is that important? Yeah. It's important. important. It's just not urgent. urgent yeah. Right. Everything is urgent. Talk about tonight to yeah. now. Right. Yes. Everything. <laughs> yeah, he has grown tremendously in that area because yeah. I promise you, he can say the same thing over and over again. Me, I get it the first time. You don't have to repeat yourself. I got you. I heard it. I'm going to shift gears and make adjustments and make sure we don't have to have this conversation again. Whereas with his family, when they were here, I watched them. Yeah, it was And they were just like, it wasn't a... So, I disagree with you, Renee, when we talked about... Such, I dis- I mean, it was just like, they Most were screaming wow. back and forth to each other and that's how they talk it was okay Mm -hmm. so I got to see because in the the beginning oh my god in the beginning of our relationship I thought he was hollering and screaming I'm like you don't have to scream at me tone it down some I'm right here just talk to me but when I got to see them in action I was like aha "Aha, I understand he's not screaming that's how they communicate that's their tone that's very important that's their volume yes but I didn't know that I'm talking just think about that how many couples out there Mm -hmm. because you did not you didn't. You didn't have an opportunity to see. Mm-hmm. You know, you meet somebody, you like the package, mm-hmm. you get together, you yes. give them your heart, and then you know what? You never go back and see the genesis, mm-hmm. the genesis. And so, she got a chance <laughs> to see, and I'm hoping that it gave me. She gave me grace because of it. Absolutely, it's yes. important mm-hmm. that it's not just you just being, you know, ain't a retentive or going things your way. This is all I know. Right. right. And I think the thing too is that I think advice uh, I want to give that. That, that dying thing is huge. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. It's huge. I mean, that's the, and nobody, everybody want to live, nope. nobody want to die. Mm-hmm. And God I mean, uses dead people. He yeah. says, present yourself to him, a living sacrifice, holy oh, and acceptable, acceptable, which is our reasonable well, act, act mm-hmm. of service. Mm-hmm. That's powerful. You know what? Also, a dead man or dead woman can't feel. No. They don't, that, that's, I, learned, I read a book about it. It was so, I had to read it over and over again. Mm-hmm. And so you know that you're dead in Christ when, you know, and I ain't there yet. You know, I think it's I'm a journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, but I'm getting better because what that means is that every you're not you're not dependent not you're not moved by outside situations. If someone say something to you, you're not moved by it. And I think that's very important in the relationship because it is. especially we're seasoned. Mm-hmm. Think about it. I'm 52. She's 47, and we've came to. I was I was 40. I was almost 50 when we got together. 49. Mm-hmm. So I had all these experiences, and then you come together, you can't just erase it. But one thing I did, I did know you can, that I can, I can humble myself. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I can die to that old, those old thinking that my parents were just not right. They didn't know better. Yeah. You know, what we saw, what we were taught. But going into the relationship, I would fight to the bone, argue to the bone about that it was right, but mm-hmm. now I look back at it and, and you didn't know. We don't know what we don't know. And and that's yeah. a good point. We don't know what we don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's why we listen to the Rich Relationship Podcast with Joe and Renee. So we can all learn and grow together. And we appreciate you guys. Yes, well thank you for having us. We, and we love you both. Love you <laughs> <laughs> and just remember it. We're stronger together. Let's go. Gil and Renee Beaver's over 30-year relationship is the genesis for the Rich Relationship Podcast, which is designed to empower individuals with the tools, principles, and the community needed to unpack ourselves, our past, and our preconceived notions associated with relationships. Let's get empty and grow together so that our lives will be filled with love and healthy, rich relationships. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your investment in time. Remember to subscribe to the show and hit the notification icon to be notified when new episodes are posted on the podcast platform that you're listening from. Or you can always find us on our website at richrelationshipsus.com or our YouTube channel, Rich Relationships with Gil Renee. 
If you found this podcast helpful or you think it can help someone that you know and care about, please pass it along and share it with them. And also, you can always send your questions and comments to richrelationships.us at gmail.com. This is a weekly podcast, and the new episodes are going to be posted on Monday by 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Remember, we're stronger together. Let's grow!